Where's our charging points? Hmm. Do we have one back here? Nope. It doesn't seem like that. Hmm. Nope. I struggle to believe <laughs> there's no chargers back here. Come on. There must be. Wow. If you went on Google today and searched for Mercedes-Benz's best-selling SUV, the GLC would come up. This is a success story for Mercedes. Started in 2015 and here we are with a facelift edition. And even though we call it facelift, there weren't that much difference when it comes to the design, but they've done some tiny little tweaks here and there to make it, you know, bring it up to date to 2023. And this car is built to be all about luxury, comfort, and bring you all the high-tech uh, equipment that you can get all in one mid-size SUV package. Let's talk about this car. As we always do on the channel, we start with the design and starting from the front of the car, we have that big Mercedes-Benz logo and then there's another one on top of the bonnet here, which is kind of random. Maybe they should have ditched that one, but it's Mercedes-Benz's design language. It's got bigger grille with all that Mercedes-Benz little logo all around it as well. You've got parking camera there for sensors and stuff like that. All around there, you've got this uh, chrome sort of finish as well. I love this color, this bluey color. It looks really good. We've got the side curtains on both sides to help divert hair in the right direction. We've got the Mercedes-Benz uh, digital light here as well, which looks really nice. This is nicely, a lot more integrated into the car than it was before. And I think this is actually slimmer as well in terms of the size, but it looks good. I think the front of it looks like it's got a nice presence to it. In fact, I think I love it. It's a really good design. Moving over to the side of the car, it looks very compact, even though this is a, a SUV, it's a big car. Um, this comes in different trim levels as well, so you can get the AMG line, which is the standard version, comes with 19 inch alloys, the standard. Then you have the AMG line premium and then the premium plus uh, version as well. This is the premium plus with a full whack of everything you can possibly get uh, in one of these if you were to buy it. So we go through that as well. I'm loving the alloys on this. This is the 20 inch alloys and I love the mortar spoke design on this. It looks really, really, really nice. Got uh, color coded uh, bumpers and little cladding on the side as well. Looks really good. And then we move further down a little bit. It's starting to rain, typical England weather. We've got the stepper, which looks good as well. It's got the little uh, grip area grip pads on it as well so you don't slip off it and it kind of start, starts off slim and then goes wider towards the back for your passengers going into the back of the car. We move further down we've got the roof rail on there which is also silver and all chrome just to match the rest of the chrome build on and the design on the car including the, uh, the door handles as well they also have that chrome finishing. Move towards the back it kind of slopes down a little bit comment below if you've seen this before in the Mercedes uh, it's uh, sort of their design. And then we come to the side of this. This is a plug-in hybrid. It all electrified in some sort of way. So you got the electric diesel, you got the electric petrol versions, and this is the 300E, so plug-in hybrid. And uh, if I just switch over a little bit, here we have our charging ports. This will support 12 kilowatt charging. So it's not fast charging, unfortunately, here in the UK at least, which is unfortunate. It just means you have to plug into those one of those seven kilowatts uh, charging points, which means I think it takes about three hours to charge this back up to 100% then caught me on that, we'll leave numbers on the screen. But that's about it for the side view. I think it looks very smart. Love the color, love the combination of the chrome finishing and the blue color as well. I think it looks fantastic. Moving on to the back of the car, we have our GLC 300E badge on that side. So you know which version you've got from distance. Mercedes-Benz logo, 4Matic on there because it's all wheel drive. And then we've got this bar that does nothing here. So that does nothing, but we've got our, our tail lights as usual. We've got a tiny little uh, roof spoiler there. Ooh. We even call that a spoiler, uh, but it's there. And then they've got this chrome finishing on the lower parts of the back of the car. And there's nothing here. <laughs> it's actually blocked off, but the exhaust is actually on the bottom of there. We've got the fake side curtains on the back. But you know what? I'm not mad at it. I think it looks really nice. It makes it look a bit more smart. And then we open up the boot. Electronically controlled, as you can see, to help you get in the car. And we get 400 litres of space here, which is five up from the predecessor. So it's not that big, which could be a big decider for someone who is trying to buy this for their family. The 400 liters of space is what you get because this has got a battery in there. Bulky battery bolted onto the car just means less space on here. You don't even get that little space underneath here. There's nothing here, just kit for when you break down. And then there's a little bag here for your charging cable, which Mercedes kindly provide with your car, I believe, or if it's free or not, I'm not sure, but there's a bag with your charging cable there. But obviously, 
The thing with that is it's okay because most people will just charge this at home. They won't carry that with them because there's no need to carry that because you won't be charging, charging this on the go. It's hybrid. So you're going to use petrol on long journeys, longer journeys and plugging it at home when you need to do school runs and local runs and stuff like that. You've got an electric uh, button here to deploy the back seats to fold it down so you get more space to fit more things in the boot if you want to. And uh, that's much, that's just about it uh, with the boot. Just look at that. Then the sun is coming out now and then it's raining at the same time. We love it, we love it. On this side of the car is where you get your petrol uh, pump. So this is where you'd fill up if you need to fill up some petrol. Uh, one thing that was interesting though is we tried to open it after a, I would say about 25 miles journey to get here and it, need to, it needed to get depressurized before we could open it. So imagine you're at the petrol station, you'd have to wait a good five minutes before that was depressurized for us to actually be able to get into the petrol tank. But that's much about it. To, to do with the design. I think it looks smart and I really, really love this color and the chrome detailing all around the car doesn't look tacky. I think it looks fantastic. And those alloys looks really good. That was the first thing I noticed when it got dropped off uh, for this review. And the side step as well, just adds that extra sort of off-roading element to it as well. It just looks good. And it's obviously functional as well because you can step on it to get in the car or for your passengers on, at the back, you can use that to sort of step in although the car is not that high up anyway but it still helps and adds uh, to the look of the car this feels very premium back here it's very mercedes and it's also cozy because of the dark feel that you get in here because it's you know black leather seats and there's no colors it's lacking colors here but hang on that's until you look at this and being lightened so you can change that and this being uh, black seats and black environment in here that stands out a bit more which is really cool one of the advantages of having the AMG Line Premium Plus package is you also get the Burmester uh, sound system in here. So you can sort of see the hints of the speaker here with the, the grill on there. So you get really good sound quality going around the car, which is nice. But let's talk about the sitting position. So the driver position on the front is how I'd normally sit. Um, so there's plenty of knee room there for long journeys, which is really good. It also makes me think if you have car seats, you'd be okay putting your car seat here. I don't know how this curved area on the back seat affects that i don't have any kids yet so i don't have any car seat to test that with but you do get plenty of knee room here plenty of space for your feet to tuck into the bottom area plenty of headroom as well i'm about five foot eleven uh, just for perspective i love how this bit just suspends over there you got cup holders there as well and then you got this digital climate control here for the passenger you got this nice chrome finishing again to match the rest of the design of the car there's a massive transmission tunnel here which means if you're sat in the middle you're gonna have to raise your knees a little bit or position it higher the sides. This will also be good for easy cleaning. So if you have kids here and they spill drinks or whatever on this, this would be nice and easy to wipe off. So this is really nice. You've got uh, armrest here. You can't get through to the back there, unfortunately. So you push this open. Um, you can place an iPad or something there. Um, well, no, no cup holders here though. Hmm. Interesting. Wonder why you'd need this apart from just placing your devices, I guess. Close that back up. And where's our charging points? Hmm. Do we have one back here? Nope. Doesn't seem like that. Hmm. Nope. Means no charging for you guys who's gonna be sitting at the back, which is a shame. It would be nice to have a charging point here though. I struggle to believe <laughs> there's no chargers back here. Come on, there must be. Wow. So this package here is going to cost you just over £72,000 full whack and Mercedes have decided not to put a charging point for the back passengers. How can I help? Sorry Mercedes, stop. That's the voice assistant, which I was going to put. To use online functions of the voice system, please check your Mercedes hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Stop. See, I was going to show you guys that later on, but it's picked up my voice and that actually works. That's a good test for how that can pick it up, even from the back seat. But I digress. Plenty of space in here. It's really good. No charging points, unfortunately. Um, anyone who sits in the middle might struggle quite a bit because they have to sit quite high up and they're just going to have to be like this throughout the whole journey, which they might not want to do. Ambient lighting is good in here as well, which I really like. It just adds to the feel. There's panoramic sunroof, which goes all the way to the back. You can also open the blind halfway through in case you have a baby back here. You might not want to blind them when it's sunny, so you might block it halfway through and you can still enjoy the sunshine coming through at the front there. And I like this little digital touch here, but yeah, I'm still baffled that there's no USB charging points. 
Up front, the story continues in terms of the premium feel of the car. I love this steering wheel. I think the first time I sat in here, I was like, this is really nice. I love the feel of it. It's very solid. And I love that they've separated some of the controls on the steering wheel. So the top area is to control the display. So the left side will control that display. The right side controls your instrument cluster. In terms of the size, that's about 11.8 inch of display, uh, portrait display as well. And up front here, the instrument cluster is around 12 inch uh, of display, which you can customize and change the view and all that stuff and the content that you see on there. And this infotainment system is, it actually is the latest MBUX uh, infotainment operating system, which works really well. There aren't that many buttons here to press. There's a lot of touch, a lot of touch uh, sensitive things. So like volume control, for example, you just slide up and down. Even up here for the panoramic sunroof to open it up and close it up, it's also a capacitive uh, system there. So you have to sort of slide and, and it works and it does what you need it to do. The only buttons that I can sort of see that can sort of count as buttons are the ones that's below here. So you can change different drive modes. Moving on, we have a wireless charging mat underneath there, which I have issues with because it's quite tight to get into. So once your phone is in there, it's actually, if you've got bigger hands than I have, that's a bit of an issue. But that's probably a good thing. It just means you won't be playing with your phone whilst you're driving, which you should not be doing. There's one USB-C port there. There's an area to place your key or you can place your phone or whatever and two cup holders. And you can easily just hide this whole area. You can hide it away using this uh, little tray there. And then moving back here, we have another opening which allows you to, there's a little cigarette butt tray here, which I'll probably ditch that straight away because I don't smoke. And then we have two USB-C ports here. So remember I was saying there's no USB-C ports in the back. I think the users at the back would have to feed from here to the back to use that USB to charge their devices if they need to. So we have three USB-C ports in total in here. One of the main issues I have with this cabin is the fact that this feels quite tight. So for example, where you rest your left foot, there's not enough space there. And I'm eight and a half size foot here and I'm already kicking. Don't know if you can hear it. I'm easily just kicking wherever the material is there, which can be uncomfortable for long journey. And it feels quite tight here as well. This column here is a bit wide. So my knees are constantly hitting this area. Luckily, this is quite, it's a bit soft. It's not that soft, but it's soft enough for me to be able to withstand it for longer journeys. You got your stalk here, one for your gear shifter. So it's kind of different. And then you got your wiper, indicator light and all that stuff. And then your ventilation here looks really cool. Gives you this nice clicky feedback like, <laughs> That's addictive. You're just going to keep playing with that as much as you want to play with it. And it also has this illumination around it as well. So that goes with the ambient lighting inside of the car. And we've got this like fake wooden sort of finish here. It's kind of old, old school. And as part of that AMG Line Premium Plus, we also get head-up display on here as well, which is nice and bright, sharp. You can also customize the information that goes on there as well. I know you guys can't see it, but it is there and it works really well. In the settings here, if we go to home, there's a menu that says comfort. So if you press comfort, uh, you've got things like your ambient lighting settings, so you can choose from 60 plus colors or combinations or whatever. Uh, but the one I really wanted to show is if you go to seat, one thing that annoys me about sitting position is you never really know the right sitting position uh, for yourself, which is you know what's comfortable and what's not. But there's a function in here which allows you to automatically adjust your sitting position based on your height. So you go into settings, you press it, and then you press start positioning. very quickly, it resets the whole thing. So if I go back to what my height actually is, so five foot 11, press start positioning. The thing moves to make sure you're sat in the right position that you're meant to sit, especially for long journeys. And underneath the steering, we have a paddle shift here as well, which uh, does two jobs. So if, in, if you're in sports mode, you can sort of use that to change your gears manually. Or if in electric mode, you can use that to change your energy recuperation levels. So more detail on this infotainment system. So like I was saying, we have the big bar here for all the buttons. Uh, well, some of the buttons, so-called buttons. Fingerprint sensors there, power button, volume control. So it's a, a slide gesture, as you can see there. So we've got different drive, drive modes. We've got hold battery or B mode. Uh, we've got electric, we have hybrid, sport, and individual as well. So in individual, you can go into settings and you can change some of the characteristics. So your drive is hybrid, your steering is comfort comfortable and stabilization and stuff like that. We have our parking controls here. So we press that button there. Again, we have to start the engine for that. Got battery information so you can see quick charge, all that stuff, next departure. And then you can press car. And when you press that car button there, it gives you all these quick functions that you can do. So you can turn 
the head up display on and off very quickly, your electronic stability, you can turn that on and off as well, car wash mode, manual uh, gear shifting and all that stuff that you can turn on very quickly when you press that. We've also got this little uh, favorite key here, which allows you to set different things as well. So your favorite fu functions, you can quickly get into those. Uh, but if we press home, we've got the main screen, which is the map at the minute. If you press this little car here, this will tell you stuff like where you want to go, parking spaces, filling station, even charging stations as well. Go back to home. One thing I love is even though we don't have buttons here for climate control and stuff, this are always there at all times. So you can easily reach, especially when sat in a driver position like this, you can easily reach for your climate control. So there's no problems there. I think that's okay. We can forgive them for that. Go back into home, we get to see some of the apps. So this is not overwhelming at all. It's very straightforward. You've got apps that are available. Uh, so you've got Mercedes Me, which would allow you to pair up and then control things to do with the car using your phone and also allow you to set up your fingerprint and all that stuff. So you've got browser, dash cam, etc. Close that. We have store, so you can buy stuff. I don't know why you'd need that in here, but we'll, we'll go back. Go back to home. You've got settings, which allows you to change variety of things in the car. If we go to assistance, so you've got eco assist, you've got collision avoidance, so you've got all those functions there for safety, blind spot assist, active lane keep assist, active brake assist, more assistance there, so things like traffic sign assist, so it reads all the traffic signs and stuff. You've got camera. Uh, so you can open your camera cover, etc. I've got parking stuff. So again, this will allow you to park safely and maneuver in the system. You can press that to allow you to uh, maneuver comfortably well. I also love this 360 thing. So you can actually sort of have a look at the car <laughs> at any time. And each area will allow you to tap as well. So you can see a vehicle there. You can go up here and then tap things like assistance and stuff like that, your ADAS system. That's pretty cool. Uh, go back, we go to vehicle. In vehicle, we can do things like your driving uh, settings, we've got comfort settings and open and close settings and stuff. Play around with that. We've got light settings as well, which allows you to change the ambient lighting in here and the way your, your beam uh, act, uh, functions when you drive in. We've got system settings as well, which allows you to do things like uh, your voice activation. So you can turn that off if you don't want it. So if I turn it off now, if I say, hey, Mercedes, it's not going to pick it up, which is really good. It means that if you have kids in the car, they're not going to annoy you by keep saying it and activating it by accident. Go back to home, so all our applications. So we go to comfort, which is what I was showing you guys earlier. It means you can automatically change your sitting position based on your height, which I think is pretty smart. I haven't seen that in any car apart from uh, Mercedes. Got your phone function, your media function, your hybrid uh, information here, like we've seen already. We go back, go across, you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well, wirelessly and wired. And this actually does off-roading. So if you tap off-road, it gives you different off-roading settings that you can actually use. One thing I always advise is when you do this though, is when you get your car, get the Mercedes guys to run you through to actually use this. So if you find yourself in tricky situations where you actually need to use it, you will know exactly what to do in that kind of scenario. But as you can see, like I said, very straightforward, very responsive. The only thing I'd say about it is the fact that this big bezels needs to go in 2023. It can be a lot slicker than that. But apart from that, I think it works really well. It's very responsive. Look at that. You can pinch to zoom and see all different things. It just works really well. You can even go 3D if you really want to get very fancy and so on. So thumbs up to Mercedes for the infotainment system. On the instrument cluster, this is nice and big again. So you can easily see all the information. The steering wheel is not in any uh, obstruction, so it doesn't obstruct your view. Uh, but the controls on here is where you start to change things around. So if you press home, uh, you can see the different uh, views that you can have. So off-road, service, and, and so on and so forth. So if we put uh, sports mode, for example, it changes the characteristics of the way this looks, which is pretty nice, as you can see there. Go back to home again. If we go up instead of down, you can then change the way the head-up display looks as well. So again, I can change that to sport mode just to match. And then although you guys can't see it, it kind of mimics what's on here on the head-up display, which is up there. And that's pretty much what I'd like to show you on that one because, you know, you can go back again if you don't want it as that. But again, press home, you can change different settings and you can scroll up and down for what's in the middle bit there. So you can see your eco display, you can go consumption, attention, assist, media, etc. You can go across as well to change track if you want to change track or whatever you want to do. But very straightforward, very responsive. You won't accidentally touch it either because it's kind of far away from your thumb as you're driving, uh, which is pretty well thought through. So bravo there to Mercedes. 
Okay, before we take this for a drive, we're gonna do things a little differently. And when I say that, it's usually I try and remember all the numbers and stats and stuff, but I've actually got it up on my phone and we're gonna mention those first. So when we get on the road, we can actually concentrate on the drive experience and what that feels like. So for those people who want these numbers, here we go. So this has a two litre four cylinder petrol engine and it's plug-in hybrid. You also have 550 newton meters of torque and 313 brake horsepower. That's a combination of the electric motor and the actual uh, um, petrol engine that we've got in there. You have zero to 62 in 6.7 seconds and top speed 135 miles per hour. EV range is quoted at 80 miles, but in reality, when this got delivered, I drove it around for a while and I was getting around 50 to 60 miles on battery only. So bear that in mind. And fuel economy, it says 565 miles per gallon. Again, it depends on how you drive, what the weather is, and all the extra jazz that goes along this. And the price of this is just above 72,000 pounds. This is for the, the pro model. So uh, it means you're getting a full whack in terms of the extras, the head up display, the Burmese sound system, and all that kind of stuff. So now that we've got that out of the way, we can actually get on the road and see what this feels like. So at the moment, I've got it in electric only mode just to have that nice, quiet feel of the car to see what that sounds like. And it's very quiet. There's barely any road noise. There is road noise, but not as much as you would expect uh, for this kind of size of a car and the 20 inch alloys that you've also got as well. So things are good on that part. In terms of visibility, I think it's great as well. Oh, we're just going over the speed bumps there. It's very stiff, I'm telling you, in this. It's not uh, the most comfortable car in terms of going over speed bumps and stuff like that. The suspensions are quite stiff. Back to the visibility, I think visibility is great. I can see everything clearly, especially when you need to turn uh, on corners. So we're coming up to this junction here. I can see clearly what's coming from the right. I can see over my shoulder. So that's nice and comfortable, which is a bonus, really good. It means if you're driving this and you've got people in the car, the last thing you want is to be distracted by other things and not concentrate on the road. So we have that ticked off straight away. Back to the comfortability. I think it's comfortable enough when you get on the motorway when it's just a nice, nice long stretch of road and you just drive in in one direction. But uh, when you're driving in an urban situation using that electric power and you know, you get over speed bumps and whatnot, especially where I live in London, um, those speed bumps are not, uh, very, very forgiving. The car is not forgiving in that area at all. It's very stiff. That aside, you got you have other modes as well. Uh, zero to 62 numbers are decent. It's not the fastest, but I don't think this is built to be something that you're gonna be doing mad crazy speeds around. But in terms of steering though, I think it's really good. We're doing 40 on this uh, you know national speed limit area. It just, the steering is very precise. It's very agile. You do get some body roll. So you're leaning in those corners as you're driving through them, but um, that's to be expected in an SUV. That's not a sports, it's not sports SUV, uh, but uh, it's a utility vehicle that's heavy. This is very heavy. I think it's more than 2.4 tons, uh, but don't quote me on that again. We'll put the accurate number on the screen. One thing I forgot to mention when we were talking about the design of the car is the fact that this is actually longer. It's got longer wheelbase as well. So it creates, it's designed to create extra uh, leg room and space inside of the car for the passengers and the driver as well to make it a lot more comfortable. And I think they've done that really well. It's a shame about the boot space though. All right, let's change mode and see what this feels like. So we can go into hybrid mode, which is now using both. So very responsive when you put your foot down, slow down around here and it's all right. And then let's change again to sports mode. Steering feels a bit stiffer which is good. It's a bit weightier, which I really like. That's, that's really good. And uh, oof, it changes the gears a lot faster as well. So it's nice and smooth across the gears as well when you go through the gears, which is really nice. Um, I'm, li I'm loving this. We're gonna hit another national speed limit area in a second, which will allow me to actually put my foot down a bit more. One thing I like about the brakes is they're very good, but can also be a bit too sharp at times. So I'm talking little press and the whole car, you feel the weight shift forward. Um, oof, <laughs> oh my God. This is sports mode. The suspension gets even more, even stiffer than it was normally in comfort mode, in electric comfort mode. So right now you go over a little speed bump and it's like a bang, bang. It's not very forgiving at all. Again, this is great for, um, 
people are going to be driving it around town. It's really nice and comfortable. When you need to hit the motorway, it would do that speed nice and comfortably as well as well. 135 miles per hour top speed. It's more than what you need. It's above the national speed limit, so you won't be doing that. Um, one thing I noticed though, in sports mode, you put your foot down and there's a tiny little lag between when you press it and something actually happens. So that could be better. We're going to test out this uh, 0 to 62 in a second. There's this uh, road that I love around here. We do have a cyclist though, so we might have to do that a bit further down. But it sounds good. <laughs> Damn, sounds good. I like it. It's not too bouncy on this uh, uneven roads. It feels very planted, comfortable, confident. So you're not going to feel like you're about to <laughs> jump off road. And that's at around 60 miles per hour, not even doing anything more than that. So, well, like I said on the brakes, little tap and the whole thing just can feel the weight shift all the way to the front. <laughs> but all round, I think it's capable. It's a fully capable car. It's comfortable to drive, fills you with confidence. And I think it handles the corners and the roads very well. And if something just jumps out the road at you, you can easily just slam the brake. Oh, that feels, that's good. <laughs> good brake. Good brakes. I think for £72,000 on the full whack, I think you're getting a lot of car for your money. It's very good on fuel economy. So in terms of combining your fuel with the battery power. So if you're someone who just drops the kids at school every morning or drive, I don't know, about 10 miles to work every morning, that kind of stuff. This is really good because you can drive, you can drive on fully electric mode just to get to those places without having to top up on fuel. And you can just plug it in at home overnight, get it charged up again, or even those uh, lamppost charger at seven kilowatt. So it's not rapid charge, which is a shame. It would be nice if they had super rapid charge so you can easily just top it up whenever you need to. That would have been nice, but they don't have that for this, unfortunately. But it's still good, it's still good. I think overall, I dig it, I really like it. And tell you what, you can also do some off-roading with this. I'm going through some uh, water here, not so much of off-roading, but <laughs> that's a lot of water. Uh, but it reminded me that this can also be some off-roading. But like I said, make sure you get um, Mercedes to teach you and show you everything that you need to do. It'd be rude not to try this 0 to 62 though. Um, roads are nice and empty now. Let's uh, pull up. Again, I don't have an actual means of scientifically testing um, the 0 to 62 figures, but um, we're stuck it in sports mode right now. And uh, let's do this. Oof. <laughs> it's quick. And for such a heavy car, I think that's really fast and it sounds good. I love the sound that it produces. But anyway, that's everything to do with the GLC uh, 300E. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you've liked this video, drop it there as well. Anything you want to see change or differently next time, drop them there as well. Um, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.